Kakadi on Monday, 17 for your Tuesday and 6 degrees on Tuesday night. Wednesday, partly cloudy and 21 the top. And Thursday, a very nice 23 degrees. Mon, we can almost feel the end of winter. We just have a couple more days to get through first. We can feel it. Thanks, Kill. It's time now for Nine News at 6 Live right now. Tonight, a shock release. The Bali bomb maker to walk free from prison within days after serving just half his sentence. Plus, two mates killed in a double tragedy motorbike crash in heavy fog. A rigging mishap sends workers running at a Subiaco worksite. A masked intruder accused of plotting to kill the Queen in a chilling crossbow attack. And Perth's car-free future, the push to ban vehicles from busy shopping strips. This is Nine News Perth with Natalia Cooper. Good evening. We begin with breaking news. The technical mastermind of the Bali bombings is set to walk free after serving just half his sentence. The 52-year-old was granted early release as part of Indonesia's Independence Day. Louise Rennie had some major blow to victims. Natalia, it is, and at the worst time, just as they prepare to mark the 20th anniversary of the atrocity. Umar Patek was the man who assembled the explosives that ripped through Bali's Sari Club and Paddy's Irish Bar, killing 202 people, including 88 Australians. Dubbed Demolition Man, it took until 2012 for him to be tracked down, arrested and sentenced to 20 years behind bars. Now, after serving only 10 years, he's due to walk free within days, receiving a huge remission on Indonesia's Independence Day, officials insisting he's been de-radicalised. Survivors and families of victims are devastated, saying all of the Bali bombers should be made to see out their sentences in full and demanding, at the very least, strict monitoring. Natalia? Lou, thank you. Two young men have been killed in a horror motorbike crash in Rockingham. Police are tonight investigating whether heavy fog triggered the rider to lose control as visibility dropped to just 50 metres. Piecing together the final moments of two young men, tragically killed overnight. Both travelling on the same motorbike through heavy fog when it left the road, slamming into a tree. Early indications were um, that it was very foggy with maybe a visibility of approximately 50 metres. Just moments before around 2.30 this morning, police spotted the pair, aged just 17 and 22, on Ennis Avenue in East Rockingham. Their attention was drawn because it was being ridden in an unsafe manner at the time. Officers didn't pursue. It would have been dangerous too and they didn't have the opportunity to. Minutes later, the intersection of Patterson Road and Ennis Avenue, the scene of a double tragedy. It would have been a shocking scene. Nearby witnesses praised for rushing to help. They did not hesitate to go and provide first aid and assistance uh, to these two young men. But there was nothing they could do. Patterson Road was closed off for more than eight hours today as detectives worked through the scene. You can still see the markings from where the bike left the road, hit this tree and about 30 metres in that direction where both riders ended up. The case now in the hands of police internal affairs and major crash investigators. It's such a huge tragedy for such young men or you know anyone, but particularly when someone is so young. Um, I, I don't think it would you would even be able to imagine what those families are going through now. Ezra Holt, Nine News. The construction union says workers were sent running during a rigging accident at a Subiaco worksite. A suspended platform tipped, causing panels to crash to the ground. Ashton Hyre and a big scare for employees. It was, Natalia, and tonight that platform remains tilted off the side of this building. Multiplex says it was during the removal of the mast climber that the load held by a crane moved and became unstable. The union believes it was likely because a chain wasn't attached properly. The dramatic dip sending panels plummeting 50 metres to the ground. Luckily, there was an exclusion zone in place, but we're told nearby spotters bolted from the area. The worksite was immediately shut down. Down, 200 workers sent home while the platform was restabilised. Multiplex says there is no current risk to safety and every precaution will be taken to make sure the operation is completed safely. Natalia. Ashton, thank you. Police have intercepted $675 million worth of ice hidden in marble slabs as the shipment arrived on Australian shores. Detectives let the accused importers sweat for weeks 
then swooped. Marching in darkness through a Burwood unit block. Police arrest three men accused of importing $675 million worth of methamphetamine on a cargo ship from the United Arab Emirates to Sydney. Acting on intelligence, Australian Border Force um, intercepted uh, 24 containers, came into Port Watney uh, last month from the United Arab Emirates. Officers finding 750 kilograms of ice concealed within marble slabs inside four shipping containers. This equates to approximately 7.5 million individual deals of ice that will no longer be on our streets. After police took the drugs from the containers, they allowed the rest of the shipment to be sent to this Homebush warehouse where members of the drug syndicate allegedly spent weeks smashing through these marble slabs, trying to find the ice which had already been seized. These men knew what they were doing, they knew what they were looking for, and that the rubble that we found in some of these factories demonstrated that. Yesterday, drug and firearm detectives raiding properties and arresting the three men, two of them just 24 and 26 years old. A third, a 34-year-old from Victoria. The accused drug importers were refused bail. Police still searching for the mastermind. Emma Partridge, Nine News. The remains of two children have been found in suitcases in New Zealand. A couple bought the abandoned bags at an online auction, making the gruesome discovery at home. Innocent and unsuspecting, a couple from South Auckland searching for bargains, getting much more than they bargained for. They are understandably distressed by the discovery and they've asked for privacy and we're ensuring there is support in place for them. The couple bought an abandoned storage locker online last Thursday and brought the contents home, but it was only when they opened two similarly sized suitcases that they discovered human remains, a grisly find that shocked neighbours and the nation. If, if, if it's bad news in terms of bodies, it's, it's sad. Today, a post-mortem confirmed the worst fears, the remains of those of two primary school-aged children. Early indications that, yes, these children may have been deceased for a number of years before being found last week. We also believe these suitcases have been in storage for a number of years. The victims are believed to have relatives in New Zealand, but the investigation has become a global one, with a possible offender thought to be overseas. Interpol is now involved. Eddie Meyer, Nine News. A sinkhole has opened up inside the B-Shed ferry terminal in Fremantle after a water main gave way underneath. The historic building has been temporarily closed, forcing the ticketing office outside, but there are no interruptions to services. The hole's not particularly big. It's about uh, as big as a person, but underneath the floor there's a wider cavity and uh, we need to understand what the structural implications of that are. Repairs could take several weeks with passengers urged to book online. The Prime Minister has made a whirlwind trip to the Torres Strait Islands, visiting remote communities cut off by the pandemic. Anthony Albanese is there to mould an Indigenous voice to Parliament as he pushes ahead with plans for an historic referendum. The Prime Minister making friends in the Torres Strait with a kiss for an elder... <laughs> and fist bumps for the kids, while the youngest is a little more shy. Anthony Albanese wants an Indigenous voice to Parliament and is visiting remote communities to help shape the plan. A voice to Parliament enshrined in our constitution will also strengthen the nation and bring it together. Aiming to hold a referendum before the next election. It's recognised the full history of this great island colony. The opposition is calling for more detail and a former Prime Minister is raising his voice to express concern that a constitutional change might have too much influence over government. I'm following the debate and I would like to have, uh, you know, Horror of horrors, more information. The voice is simply uh, an advisory body. The Prime Minister also using his trip to seek advice on how to create jobs where they're most needed. There's still significant pockets of uh, high unemployment, including uh, for 
uh, Indigenous Australians. But outside remote regions, the latest jobs figures paint a different picture. Today, confirming the national unemployment rate has dropped to a record low of 3.4%. That is the lowest unemployment rate we've had since August 1974. But with inflation at its highest point in more than 20 years, economists warn the Reserve Bank will push interest rates up to cool the economy down. And that will hit the jobs market. But as the economy slows down uh, under the weight of higher interest rates, expect unemployment to rise through next year. So today's record figures may be fleeting. Fiona Willen, Nine News. A masked man armed with a crossbow allegedly said, I'm here to kill the Queen before being arrested at Windsor Castle. The 20-year-old fronted court in London, charged with treason over the Christmas Day incident. It's the Queen's home and a fortress that stood for over 900 years with round-the-clock armed security. But Windsor Castle is where police say Jaswant Singh Chail attempted to carry out his plan to assassinate the 96-year-old. The Southampton man, now 20, appearing in London's Westminster Magistrates Court via video link, charged under the UK's Treason Act. He was arrested at the Royal Residence on Christmas morning, wearing a face mask and carrying a loaded, powerful crossbow. The court hearing, as he approached, an officer asked, can I help you? Mr Chale replying, I am here to kill the Queen. The officer drawing his taser and ordering him to get on his knees, describing Mr Chale as like something from a vigilante film or dressed for Halloween. Queen Elizabeth II, who was at the castle awaiting Prince Charles and Camilla and Prince Edward and Sophie, was made aware of the top-level emergency. The court also heard details about a video message police say Mr Chale made four days prior to coming here to Windsor Castle, in which he was wearing a face mask, holding a crossbow and apologised for what he was going to do. Prosecutors allege he was seeking revenge for historic acts, including the massacre of hundreds of demonstrators in India by British forces in 1919. It's the first time treason charges have been laid since 1981, when a British teen fired six blanks at the monarch as she rode in the Trooping the Colour ceremony. It's Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Colonel of the Grenadier Guards. Hello, some little disturbance in the approach road. Mr Chael, who is yet to enter a plea and only spoke briefly, remains in custody under the Mental Health Act. In London, Edward Godfrey, Nine News. WA billionaire Andrew Twiggy Forrest has helped drive the first humanitarian grain shipment out of war-torn Ukraine. The mining magnate met with President Zelensky in Kyiv to work through storage and shipping issues. 23,000 metric tonnes of wheat grain left a Ukrainian port on Wednesday bound for Africa, bringing relief for millions on the brink of starvation. There's a push tonight to ban cars on Perth's most popular shopping strips to beautify our streets. The plan is aimed at bringing in business by making more space for customers. Less parking, more people. Three quarters of this street is allocated to cars and only a quarter to people. So it's about rethinking that so that businesses can flourish. That's the proposal to revitalise some of Perth's most popular streets. The University of Western Australia and Telethon Kids Institute researchers sharing their vision for three shopping-centric social areas. Fremantle South Terrace, Belvedere Street in Belmont and Oxford Street in Leederville, making more room for businesses to expand and for bigger footpaths. This is space where we could sell more flowers. This is space where we could sell more coffees. For the city of Fremantle and here in Vincent, pedestrian-focused streets and extended outdoor dining areas isn't a new concept. It's one they've embraced and say they'll continue to work on. We've currently got requests for proposals coming in for our Leederville car park. So to remove the car parking from the street while we go through that transition would be very tricky. We do need to get the balance right. And the concept has the cautious support of other experts and local businesses. Completely making them pedestrian is a bit of an issue. Can't quite see how you get rid of them totally, but you slow them down. I love the idea of um, alfresco dining out the front of more um, places which I think would work really well however I think people already do complain about lack of parking here and also for uber drivers as well where are they going to pull up to pick up their um, their orders it's about finding a space on the side streets anyway for most people so this is something that we're used to doing anyway Ashton Hyren, Nine News
A Perth school has been forced to close its oval to dog walkers after a student accidentally rolled in left behind mess. But park regulars are devastated, saying most of them do the right thing. Lush green grass and plenty of it. A dog's dream, now a no paw zone, thanks to a dog gone dung. It's just disappointing. For Fiona Clark and her beloved Rumble, this was a nasty surprise. They came down to the park and um, saw that there was a sign saying it was closed. For several years, Rivervale Primary has shared its spacious green with dog walkers, but the welcome has worn off. They said that it was because kids have been stepping in poo. It's fed up principal revealing a student accidentally rolling in dog droppings was the final straw, telling Nine News the child was literally covered from head to toe, very distressing for them and their parents. It is a horrible situation and I do apologise for that, but we also want a place for our fur babies to play. The headmaster's there to protect the children, not to worry about people with dogs. While no one's blaming the school, some of the Oval's regulars are wondering where now. I feel safe here in an enclosed environment. Your dog doesn't run off. There are 25 off-leash areas in the city of Belmont, including this one, but none with a fence. The council says it is looking into it. I think there is a demand out there. We're not certain exactly how much, but certainly there is a demand. We did public consultation on it and we're continuing with our investigations this year. A good thing spoiled by a small few. It's so easy just to pick up after your own dog. Always carry me on. I do the right thing because I have grandkids pay here as well. Louise Rennie, Nine News. Kelly Haywood has your weather details from Rolly Stone tonight. Kelly, it was a frosty morning across Perth. Well, it certainly was, Natalia. Many of us forced to scrape the ice off our windscreens on the way to work this morning, but it was coolest out in Jandicott. You certainly needed an extra thick blanket out there. Getting down to just 1.7 degrees this morning, slightly warmer in the Swan Valley, 2.4 this morning there, and 2.6 degrees out in Pierce. Even in the city, we woke to a very cool 3.2 degree morning. Now, thankfully, it did warm from there, though, hitting our day's maximum of 18 degrees degrees and the sun even managed to show its face for the better part of the day and believe it or not Natalia that sun is sticking around for most of next week and just how long we can expect that beautiful sun well I'll tell you coming up a little later. Looking forward to the sunshine and your forecast Kel thanks. Next, Perth Airport's jobs blitz. More than 500 positions up for grabs. Plus, is WA's red-hot property market set to cool? The grim forecast for next year. Parents warn schools are the new recruiting ground for Islamic State. The newly discovered benefit of eating Brussels sprouts, broccoli and cabbage. And later, a promising drug at last for pancreatic cancer, giving sufferers a fighting chance. Perth Airport is launching a recruitment blitz to fill more than 500 vacancies as COVID depletes staff and passenger numbers surge. Almost 30 employers, including Border Force, Quarantine and Catering, are looking for workers as part of the three-day online jobs fair, which starts September 8. It comes as the airport processed 1.1 million travellers last month, double that of last year. Perth property prices could drop almost $90,000 by the end of next year in a new grim forecast. ANZ economists predict the median house value will dip back below $500,000. The data shows prices across WA may fall by 13% before a rebound in 2024. But property experts say demand is still very high and investors won't be shying away with rental returns starting to climb. Religious and right-wing extremists are trying to recruit Australian children in the schoolyard. Home Affairs, the Home Affairs Minister rather, is tonight echoing the nation's spy chief, warning terror groups are converting kids as young as 13. Religious extremists. We have to fight. 
It's part of our obligation. To neo-Nazi fanatics, as terrorism evolves, so are the faces of its recruitment drive. We're seeing these presentations in children that are younger and younger, and it's something that we really want the community to be thinking about and talking about. The Home Affairs Minister briefed by ASIO of a startling example at an Australian school, a cell of teenagers radicalising other students in the playground. Their targets, loners and bullying victims. Their first tactics, flattery and friendship, before showing them increasingly violent Islamic State propaganda, eventually beheading videos. It happens far more often for sexual exploitation, it's really ugly. And of course the extremists only need one young guy to go and do something rash, throw their life away and take another life to have a big victory. Take 2017, the foiled New Year's Eve Fed Square shooting plot. A year later, the fatal Burke Street stabbings, the culprits, brothers aged 20 and 30. In the schoolyard though, extremists are targeting teenagers as young as 13, with more and more youths added to the ASIO watch list. And the country's spy chief has already voiced his concerns. As the Director General of Security, this trend is deeply concerning. For parents, no doubt distressing. For the young targets, perilous truly life-shaping decisions when they're actually, you know, still learning their times tables. Adam Hegarty, Nine News. One in two Australian apprentices are failing to finish their courses and on-the-job training. Low wages, poor work conditions and bullying are the main reasons, according to a new report. Ahead of next month's Jobs and Skills Summit, the federal government is working with employers to expand apprenticeship subsidies in several crucial fields. There's now more reason than ever to include Brussels sprouts on your dinner plate. The Heart Research Institute has found eating a diet high in cruciferous vegetables, which include broccoli, cauliflower and cabbage, can reduce the chance of blood clots. Research shows the natural chemicals in the vegetables could also be used to treat stroke patients. Veterans have come together to mark 50 years since the final withdrawal of our troops from Vietnam. The day coinciding with the anniversary of the Battle of Long Tan, Australia's most costly fight of the war. Silence in the centre of Sydney. Half a world and half a century away from the horrors of the Vietnam jungle. Nobody ever wins a war. Everyone loses and we all pay a terrible price. Ageing but not yet old, still bearing the weight of war, these days reflected in the medals on their chests as a new generation of soldiers honoured the last. Today, we acknowledge that heritage with gratitude for its gifts to us all. Today's service for Vietnam Veterans Memorial Day falling on the anniversary of the Battle of Long Tan, a fierce and brutal fight through rubber plantations in the south of Vietnam. The landmark battle depicted in the 2019 movie Danger Close. Considered a rare triumph in a war that saw 60,000 Australians tour Vietnam, 3,000 were injured in battle, with 512 paying the ultimate price. It's now been 50 years since the last Australian combat troops left the battlefields of Vietnam. This year's service, the first since the disruptions of COVID-19. Vietnam veterans were treated pretty, pretty badly on return to Australia. It was not a good time to be a soldier, sailor or an airman returning from the conflict. Time healing some of those wounds. The public realised that we went there, we, we, were in the member, we were members of the Defence Force, we went and done what our country asked us to do. Charles Croucher, Nine News. To finance and insurance and utility companies were among those announcing profit results today, but one energy company posted a big loss. Here's business reporter Chris Kohler. They're some of the companies that Australians use every day, and it was their turn to publish their profits. For toll road company Transurban, it was a modest $16 million, but it will pay a bigger dividend. At Medibank Private, it was just shy of $400 million for the year, also handing out a slightly bigger dividend. But Origin Energy handed down a thumping $1.4 billion loss. Overall, it was a down day on the market as investors poured through those results. And the owner of Penfolds has hiked the price of some of its wine, which mightn't go down well in the bottle-o, but shareholders were cheering today. 
and the Aussie dollar remains weak at 69.2 US cents and 68.1 euro cents. Next, the great resignation. We reveal the industries topping the list for Australians wanting to call it quits. Plus, a prominent greyhound trainer accused of plying his dog with alcohol to rig the race. Restaurant rage, a diner's callous attack on another customer. And thousands of dollars hidden in discounts and rewards. How you can cash in. Nine News, brought to you by Water Corporation. Think climate change. Be water wise. Millions of Australian workers have one foot out the door with NAB research showing the great resignation is still underway. New data has confirmed businesses are struggling to fill empty jobs. For startup founder Jody Geddes, attracting and keeping workers is a constant battle, which is why she now offers full work from home flexibility and much more leave. Not only do we have life leave and birthday leave, but we've also introduced 12 weeks gender neutral parental leave. We offer stillbirth leave, uh, menopause leave, even gender transformation leave. She's among a wave of bosses trying to stand out in the tightest labour market in decades. People are looking at not only salary, but also what they're able to offer in terms of benefits, policies and flexibility. Great for workers, but it's now a cutthroat economy for employers. I think it's the number one priority for most businesses across the country. One in five Australians say they're thinking about quitting their job. That's even higher in the mining, farming, utilities, finance and education sectors. And it could get worse the competition for staff when you have an unemployment rate of 3.4 per cent will only tell you that it will continue to heat up. Working from home is now a huge draw card. Because this is where workers don't want to be, driving to and from the office. About a third of the average working week is spent working from home, but the research shows most would like it to be much more than that. It enables them to be the best, you know, parent or caregiver, whatever's important to them, but also bring their best selves to work. Chris Kohler, Nine News. A prominent greyhound trainer is accused of plying his dog with alcohol to fix a race. The 63-year-old is fighting the charges, insisting he treats his animals the way he treats people. A matter of moments is all it took. Favourite in the one, support for the three. For the race favourite to become the wooden spoon. Oh, the other one ran into trouble. Winlock Lloyd up the back of Winlock Crocker. Winlock Lloyd, a dog which detectives say was intentionally plied with alcohol by trainer Augustus Weeks. Winlock Lloyd found a dead end. Mr Weeks, did you give a dog alcohol? The alleged corrupt conduct unfolded in June last year. The well-known trainer accused of fixing the Bathurst race. Police say after allegedly drugging his dog, Weeks then placed a number of successful bets on a rival greyhound he trained. When it won, he pocketed $4,000. I thought he'd win, Weeks told a local newspaper at the time. Two of his other littermates raced today and I knew this one would get to the lead. Detectives raided Mr Weeks' property at Larris Lee near Orange last month. It was there the trainer was arrested and charged with four counts of corrupt conduct. Were you fixing this race? No comment. Augustus Weeks has been issued a temporary suspension from Greyhound Racing. A final decision on whether the trainer will be allowed to return won't be made until the court process plays out. The Weeks family has long been involved with Greyhound Racing, but this is not the first controversy. Six years ago, Augustus Weeks' son Toby was accused of harassing the former Deputy Premier Troy Grant over Greyhound bans. He was later cleared of those harassment charges. Do you want to comment on how you treat your animals? Just like I treat people. Lauren Tamazi, Nine News. Security cameras have captured the moment a New York diner was brutally attacked from behind by another customer outside a restaurant. The seemingly unprovoked attack in the Bronx left the victim with a skull fracture, broken cheekbone and bleeding on the brain. He's in a critical but stable condition. Consumers could be saving thousands of dollars from discounts and free offers many are forgetting to claim. As the cost of living skyrockets, there are tips to nab discounts on everything from groceries to home appliances. 
They're the bills we pay on a regular basis for power, mobile phones, the internet, even car insurance. But instead of taking your money, they could be making you money. There are rewards programs or offers linked to each of them that we can be maximising. Discounts and freebies we're due, but don't realise we can claim. They are getting very competitive, uh, with great offers available at the moment. Customers with Woolworths car insurance or home insurance can now get 10% off one grocery shop every month. If you're paying $250, that's $25 uh, um, each month. Over the course of the year, that's $300 in savings, which is substantial savings. NIB Insurance now offering members grocery savings as well. Groceries up to 5% off, you know, your, your brands like Coles and Woolworths. Uh, many of our members will take advantage of the fuel discounts that we're offering up to 5%. Banks are also getting in on the act. The Commonwealth offering 30% off a 12-month more NBN plan. It's also worth checking if your mobile phone provider has a rewards program. Telstra Plus, one of the biggest. Essentially what they can do is earn points on their bill every single month and they can use those points to redeem against all sorts of things. Like smartwatches, AirPods and phone accessories. Rewards can be even greater if you're a new customer. Power company Red Energy offering 15,000 Qantas points when you sign up for an eligible plan. It's worth checking to see all the hidden extras you could be entitled to claim. Even superannuation companies are ramping up member rewards with savings on electronics, home appliances and fashion. You might be able to access greater discounts that you weren't be able to uh, just a few months ago. Bridget O'Brien, Nine News. Ahead, hope for sufferers of pancreatic cancer, the groundbreaking Australian treatment targeting the usually deadly disease. Plus, Coles promising 45 local suppliers in its first WA convenience store. But first, Matthew Pavlich is here with Sport and Pav. Mixed news for the Dockers. That's, That's election. right, Natalia. The skipper is back, which is good news for the big match, but there are some concerns in attack. Giant challenge accepted. The Dockers take flight for a top four finish. Back in Melbourne, but where will football's hottest property land next? And fired up fans, farewell, naughty Nick. With their top four hopes on the line, Dockers skipper Nat Fife is timing his September run to perfection. Back for Saturday's must-win clash with the Giants. But it's not all good news with Rory Lobb ruled out with a shoulder injury. Ruckman Lloyd Meek returns, Darcy Tucker omitted, but making the trip to Canberra. A flying fife, a sight for sore eyes. The downside, no Rory Lobb is a tall target. We're not sure, what the, as you said, what the forward line's going to look like, but like I said, it's all about everyone playing their role. Griffin Logue on the plane, but out to prove his fitness at a captain's run tomorrow. The Dockers needing a win and results to go their way to make the top four. Five playing forward and will be a giant headache. Five, brilliant. Five fires. Five pretty much ends it. It's a difficult one for us. We know that. Um, do we have the players that can cover him? Well, I wouldn't disrespect him like that. I think well, whoever we put to him, he's going to really challenge. GWS welcoming back midfielder Tim Taranto from concussion, cautious of a fired up Frio. And they've got a lot on the line. Um, it's a long flight over for them, but um, they're professional. They're used to it. So, yeah, we're expecting a really difficult game. Ready to ruin the ride. We're coming up against a team that um, are, are certainly going to threaten uh, come September and uh, very dangerous, high respect for them. A massive match in more ways than one. Michael Walters, the 11th docker to reach 200 games. Yeah, it's unreal. I mean, you know, to reach it after 14 years, to be at the footy club for 14 years is a massive achievement. But one thing clearly on his mind. Hopefully get the win and set, us up, set ourselves up for finals footy. Mitch Turner, Nine News. At West Coast, it's season over for another two stars with Nick Natanui and Andrew Gaff on holidays early. Jai Cully, Tim Kelly, Willie Rioli Jr and Bailey Williams all back for Mission Impossible against the top of the table, Cats. The Eagles say round 23 is not about winning but building blocks for the future. But we've seen some improvements, some of the things we're trying to work on, so that, that won't change this week. Limping to the line with a dodgy left knee, Ruckman, Nick Natanui, sent for a spell early. Hopefully we get a really good summer. Um, everyone gets healthy, gets fit and gets available. Um, and then we get to the draft. The Eagles playing for one last go at consistency in Jamie Cripps's 200th game. He's his own man. Um, 
and he's very much loved and respected. So, you know, hopefully we can put a, a good effort in for him. Decision time for Alastair Clarkson, arriving back in Melbourne on top of the coaching wish list for the Kangaroos and Bombers. I'll try and work something out over the next 24 hours. With the Essendon saga dragging on, support for Ben Rutten. The one thing you want in our industry is respect and I don't think Ben's been afforded that. I think it's been pretty poor how he's been treated. What I do empathise with is a human element. It's a tough situation. While Rutten's future hangs in the balance, Michael Hurley has called time. Back for one final game before retirement, St Kilda's Dan Hanabry says goodbye against his old side, Sydney. I've had you know, a number of injuries and, and played... Um, you know, four or five games in two years, not getting any younger. We've got some really good young kids coming through. The 31-year-old managing just 17 games in a nightmare injury run at Moorabbin. Alexia Pesce, Nine News. Sydney is finally locked in for this year's NRL Grand Final after a last-ditch effort from Queensland to steal the show. But this is only for one year, and I have to stress that. It's not for the long term. Negotiations will recommence for future grand finals. It's really now put it on the table for the future. This year's decider will be played on Sunday, October 2. Well, cricket season isn't too far away and Mitch Marsh believes WA All-Rounders will continue to shine. Cameron Green is now a fixture in the test side while Aaron Hardy is coming off a breakthrough domestic season ending with an Australian A tour of Sri Lanka. Yeah, I've got one that's ending my career and another one that probably will in a few years' time. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great fun. Yeah, the sky's the limit for both of them. Um, we've got Stoyne as well in Western Australia, so we are blessed with all-rounders and it, it's, a, it's a great problem to have. Marsh and Hardy joining women's bowler Piper Cleary to unveil a new double champions mural in the heart of the city. And Nick Kyrgios has been booed on his exit from the Cincinnati Masters, his temper flaring a few games into his clash with American Taylor Fritz, taking aim at the chair umpire. Stop using the F word or you'll get penalty every time. So sometimes you play with them moving, sometimes you don't. Yeah, but is it normal for people to leave in the middle of the point? Kyrgios also needing treatment for a knee issue just a week from the US Open, topping off a dirty day, a rowdy send-off from the pro Fritz crowd after the loss. It's almost they can't avoid any issues. <laughs> Nick Kyrgios, big selection news, a huge round 23 action. Can't wait for the AFL games this weekend. Yeah, big weekend ahead, Pat. Thank you. Next, the new drug giving patients with pancreatic cancer a fighting chance, plus the ghost grandmother who stunned mourners by speaking at her own funeral. And Kelly Haywood is in Rollystone tonight. Kel, we're in for a string of clear days. Well, Natalia, those rain clouds have disappeared. Tomorrow will be slightly overcast before that winter sunshine makes a comeback. But I'll have your full forecast coming up very soon. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the biggest stories making news in Perth this evening. Bali bombing survivors have been left devastated with the technical mastermind of the atrocity set to walk free after serving just half his 20-year sentence. Police are investigating whether heavy fog is to blame for a motorbike crash that claimed the lives of two young men in Rockingham. A suspended platform has tipped at a Subiaco work site, causing panels to crash to the ground and sending workers running. And there's a push to ban cars on Perth's most popular shopping strips to make them more pedestrian friendly and bring in business. Australian researchers are behind a new drug trial, giving hope to sufferers of the usually deadly pancreatic cancer. It aims to weaken the disease's defences, allowing chemotherapy to be much more effective. Jess lost her partner Mike from pancreatic cancer last Christmas, 16 months after his diagnosis. He did really well to survive that long. He loved mentoring, especially young kids in sport, um, and he was a real people person. There were no subtle early warning signs for the 66-year-old. He played golf, a round of golf on a Monday, and then he got really quite suddenly ill 
after that. Over the years, this is going to become the second leading cause of cancer deaths, um, and we need to do something about it. That something includes this, a capsule called AMP945. The Australian-developed drug is being trialled as first-line therapy after researchers at the Garvin discovered that softening the tumour's stiff collagen exterior opens up blood vessels and improves drug delivery. We can mimic exactly what we saw in the laboratory and it's super exciting now to actually take this and offer this to patients for the first time. Blocking a protein called focal adhesion kinase weakens the tumour's defence, so chemotherapy has a better chance to penetrate. Advanced imaging shows the active cancer cells in red despite chemotherapy and the effects of adding the new treatment. You improve survival of animals in those models quite significantly. The drug has already passed human safety trials and this new phase two study will involve 62 patients with advanced disease. Give patients AMP945 for seven days, then we would stop, let them have their chemotherapy and then give them another pulse before their second and third dose. Without research, you, you know, I just don't see that you can progress. Trial information can be found on this website. Gabriella Rogers, Nine News. Coles is promising the best of local products as it expands its network of convenience stores to WA. The grocery chain will launch its small supermarket format in Perth's Angelo Street in November. The store will carry 45 local suppliers including Mary Street Bakery, meal delivery service Hale the Kale and meat trader the farmhouse Margaret River. From Pink Snapper to Terrific Taylor, it's been a spectacular week of local finds in this week's Fish Watch. And further north, anglers have been treated to some once-in-a-lifetime catches. Here's Carl Langdon. Some great weather forecast here in the metro area over the next couple of days. A great chance for you to get out, catch a fish and send us your catch. Today we start with Daniel Cobham and Reese Wiggins holding their magnificent sailfish while posing for a photo before releasing the fish to fight another day. A recent trip to the Abrolhos Islands, another destination to add to your bucket list, produced some spectacular results. Aaron de Goyes is wrapped with his thumping yellowfin tuna, the sashimi, I can taste it now. Daniel Lapati is holding an awesome WA Jewfish, while fellow crew members Jason Colombo, Damien Kalura and Rob Luca also wanted to be part of the action. The trio each landing a very nice fish on the trip. Jason Colombo pictured here is all smiles after catching some very nice pink snapper in the perfect conditions with a setting sun. Paul Schwart just loves quabba. It just continues to produce the goods with another beautiful Spanish mackerel caught from the rocks. Alex Zimmer also had success with a Malabar cod weighing in at 15 kilos and measuring 95 centimetres. Closer to home, an early morning start. North Metro saw David Vinciulo score an 80 centimetre pink snapper at around 6am. And lastly, George Robertson, while bait casting, had a brilliant session on the beach with Taylor. Most caught were around the 50 to 60 centimetre mark, except this one. His PB, a fish of 72 centimetres. Thanks to everyone who sent us their catches last week. Make sure that you tune into my boat dive and fishing show Saturday morning, 5 to 6 a.m. on Radio 6PR for more information. An 87-year-old grandmother has pulled off the ultimate magic trick, stunning mourners at her funeral by popping up in a holographic video. Holocaust educator Marina Smith shared previously untold secrets with her loved ones. What would you say at your funeral? I would say at my funeral, I'm so pleased that I met so many good people. Her son, whose company created the AI tool, says those who attended were blown away. Stay with us. Kelly Haywood is back with all your weather details live from Rolly Stone right after this break. Welcome back. Well, what a delightful Thursday that was. We only managed a top of 18 degrees today, but the sun did come out to warm us up after what was a very chilly start to the day, waking to just three degrees in the city. Now this evening, it has cooled it down to 14. Taking a look at the satellite, and a ridge of high pressure is keeping most of the state dry tomorrow, but those in the southwest can expect some light showers and accompanying chilly temperatures. Taking a look around the country now, some 
some late showers for those in Adelaide tomorrow. 15 the top, Hobart 14 degrees and some rain there. And that wet weather continues through to Canberra, Melbourne and Sydney. And it's looking sunny as we move up the coast to Brisbane. 26 degrees and 33 the top for Darwin. Similar conditions in our state's north. Sunshine across the board. 34 degrees for Broome and Kununurra and 29 degrees in Marble Bar. Cooling significantly as we move down the coast. 17 the top for both Esperance and Albany and a one degree morning ahead for those in Dalwollanew. Out on the water tomorrow, seas will be below a metre and swell will reach up to four metres. Now we are expecting a partly cloudy top of 19 tomorrow with a very, very slight chance of rain into an overnight low of nine degrees. Now a top of 20 for both weekend days. Chilly nights though, nine and seven degrees. Cooling as we head into the working week, a top of 18 for Monday, Partly cloudy, 17 degrees on Tuesday, warming to 21 on Wednesday and then a cloudy 23 on Thursday. Just a taste of what's to come, Natalia, with spring finally right around the corner. Kelly, thank you. And that's Nine News this Thursday. Thanks for your company. A Current Affair is next. Enjoy your evening. From us, good night.